Hello everyone, this is Dr. S. N. Ali, and my area of specialization is human resource management. Currently, I'm working as head of business administration department at University of Sialkot. So today I am feeling very much honored to be a uh, part of this conference. So with this great player, I am going to share with you the today's topic, which I'm going to present here. And uh, you can see from here uh, with your screen that public administration, major concepts, theories, and approaches in context of ICMGD. So basically I have prepared uh, this uh, public administration because this is under the domain of this uh, prestigious conference. And uh, I am going to discuss with you that what is public administration, what are the major concepts involved, what are the theories and what are the uh, previous and the contemporary approaches linked with this uh, uh, public administration. So these are the contents of uh, our session, uh, meaning of public administration, the functions, the theories, the main leading theories involved in the administrative theory and the applied administration. What is basically the scope and how we can say that the nature of the public administration is changing with the passage of the time. And next we will cover about the traditional and the development administration and finally, new uh, are the contemporary public administration. So starting with the basic uh, concept of what is public administration is, so uh, it is can be easily observed that it is a word that is originated from the ad administrate. It means to serve or to manage. Like in short, we can say that it's a management of affair, public or the private sector. And as far as the originator or the, you can say that the father of the public administration, we can uh, see here the Wilson who just provided this concept in decades back. And he has mentioned that it's a systematic and a comprehensive view of all kinds of laws, rules, regulation regarding the public and regarding the management or administration of the public working in the different workplaces. So next, the very important concept, POSD, CRB, abbreviation, and it is given by Gulick and Arvik. So basically, uh, as far as the public administration concept is concerned, so we can start with the term planning. I can here just give you a brief uh, overview of the history. Like this term is originated by the founding father of the public administration, as I mentioned earlier. The reason behind is that actually the administration and the politics both are prevailing at the same level and people are indulged in different kind of discrimination or favoritism kind of activities. So there is a need to find out a way where we can say that this is a new uh, phase that need to be emerged. And that is the reason behind decades back, this term was introduced and how this term will work, how this actually performing in the society. So starting with the term P that is known as a planning, we can use this term in every kind of domain, but particularly we are discussing the planning for public administration. So actually this is about the future organizational goal. How are we going to achieve the future? Like what are our plans? What are we going to be achieved? It is known as a planning. Secondly, we need to be uh, use different kind of resources. For instance, human is a resource, finance, and different kind of information and knowledge. So there is a need to organize, or you can say that uh, pulling the resources into an, an proper way is known as an organization. After organization, we need to be some kind of professionals that are going to be handled, or you can say that that can perform their services in a very better way. So we need to hire new and potential candidates. And that term we're basically starting with the recruitment till the retention, appraisal, performance appraisal, and so on. Next, we need a leader. We need a person who is going to be take up this charge. So direction, guidance, and mentoring is required. Next, we need to be a coordinate. Coordinate means between, among, top to bottom, and all kind of phase. 
like the coordination and the communication must be there. There must be no communication gap. Reporting, like who reports to whom, the chain of command, span of control. So like who is your boss, who is going to be perform your uh, task and like the person which are going to be reporting. And finally, we have a budgeting. Budgeting means your future predictions, your forecasting. So very important concepts, the functions of public administration. So let's talk about the theories involved in the public administration. We have two renowned theories, administrative theory and the applied administration. So let's talk about the administrative theory. Administrative theory, again, converted into the organizational theory and the public personal administration. So I just going to briefly discuss with you just because of the shortage of time, like organization theory is basically based upon a scenario where a multi-linear company just die and a new emerging company will like rise within a day, within a night. So this is because of the organization theory. The concepts involved in the OT is basically like what are your span of control, the hierarchy, the chain of command, and different kind of, you can say that process is involved. So OT is basically covering all kinds of things. And as far as the publics are concerned, the human resources are concerned, so very uh, emerging and the link concept. And second one, we have a public personal administration. So public personal administration means the human resources that we're going to manage that can assure that the best output with the least costly inputs. Like here, we're going to talk about the efficient work. Like we're going to be input a minimum resources and going to take the maximum outcome from that particular thing. So personal public administration, like you're going to be manage the resource, the personals, that are actually working in your organization. So we are going to put minimum resources and the outcome will be get, get a better sanction. And then we have a applied administration. Applied administration will cover the political functions, legislative function, financial functions. I am going to discuss a term here, the pestle analysis, the very well renowned term, like that can cover the political, economical, legal, social, technological factors, so the additional one here is the educational function, the economic administration, I also discussed about that. The foreign administration, its main administration is a term where you're going to be uh, monitor, admin, administrate, and you can say that manage the workplace. And we are going to be more focused towards the internal and external factors, like the company where we are working, for example, in different demographical ways, in which country you're operating, the external factors does, does matter, like economical condition, the political condition, and of course, the internal factors can also not be ignored. For example, your employees, your cultures, employees, etc. So the second theory involved in the public administration. So here is, you can say that the summarized way in this picture, like starting from the left side, this is again a repetition, or you can say that the discussion I have also covered, the starting is the P-O-S-D-C-O-R-B, the functions of public administration. It will cover to the broad perspective that could be, you can say that the, the main founding father as I discuss about the, the Wilson. It's a Wilson view that discussed about a systematic and a detailed uh, discussion on the public administration. And next we have the theories which I have discussed about the administrative theory and the applied administration. So right now we have covered the main aspect of the public administration. So let's talk about the scope of public administration. It's basically the basics of the government, like every government need to administer their public. Every government has a responsibility, how are you going to manage the public? Like public working in the organizations, public are the surroundings. So it's a very broader end aspect. There was been no discrimination policies, the instrument of change in the society, it plays a vital role like life of the people. For example, uh, if the discriminatory policies, the bullying, or other sort of the unexpected behavior are prevailing in the society, so government will be the responsible or the uh, body in which you are linked with. Then we have the executing laws, policies, programs of the state. And next we can say that the the society in that it provides the continuity, the instrument for the national integration in the developing countries which are facing class wars. So basically the, it is more linked towards the some kind of developing 
are underdeveloped countries because that need much more attention to their general public. So the scope of the public administration I have discussed with you. So now the, the short way of the era that is basically starting from the period of dichotomy. That is I discussed in the start of my session that in the 18th or uh, decades back I just mentioned. So it's in the period of dichotomy, like at that time, there was no concept of public administration. The founding father of the public administration initiated this concept and I mentioned that this concept must be separately recognized. And then in 1927 and to 1937, it was independently originated. It could be a, the second, the functions of the view are mentioned here. The principles of administration were given. Next, the behavioral change. Like with the help of this public administration, the change in the behavior emerged. So in next phase, we will convert it into the uh, crisis. And finally, as I'm going to discuss the last thing, the basic difference between the traditional and the new public administration. So let's move on. So this is the short way or summary of the traditional and the developed uh, administrative policies. So for instance, in the development administration, there is a change oriented in the traditional, the status quo, like the one person, the one man is there, the economy and the efficiency was the traditional one and the goal and the result oriented. Like we are focusing on right now, we are focusing on the target or the task must be achieved. Hierarchical and the rigid and the flexible and dynamic, like there is must be a more way to how to respond. The simple and limited and the complex and multiple. Routine operations, there must be a new or the innovative, like every person has a right to uh, create his or own ideas. Centralization, one man show, dictatorship, like the person who is at the top just give orders. But right now, we are uh, believing on the decentralized organization, the delegation of the authority or the learning organization. Don't rely on the planning, the stress on the planning. The plan must be there. Plan must be measurable. Plan must be achievable. Then we have the organizational change, creative and innovative. Like we are talking about new things, emerging things, stress on the participation of the people. And previously, there was just a stress on the formal authority. So there is a difference between that. Lastly, we're going to cover the public administration, new things like, for example, the contemporary public administration emphasis on such kind of themes, the summary or somehow of the total thing, like the less generic and the more public, stress on the social equity, anti-bureaucratic, like there must be a, a some kind of uh, delegation of the authority concept prevails. Decentralization is there, qualitative transformation. So basically, the thing is that uh, in this session, we have just discussed about what is actually the need or the basic requirement of this new term. So right now, we are believing that with the help of public administration, we can not only uh, save the right of the employees working in the organization, but also the generic public. So thank you so much. And again, I'm finally, I'm very much honored to be part of this session. So I'm very much thankful to you. Take care. Goodbye.